My name is Noah and I am an alcoholic. I wanted to start this video by saying that because I have gone to great lengths these past two years to try to run away from this very simple fact about myself. And the result of that has led to a tremendous amount of pain and discomfort and anxiety. It's been a very, very long two years. So again, my name is Noah and I am an alcoholic. In this video, I want to give you guys a life update. I want to talk about what these last two years have been like for me active in my addiction. I want to talk about when I went back to drinking, the progression of my drinking and my behavior that was aggressive and dangerous. I want to discuss the way I was thinking and feeling, the denial I was experiencing. I want to see if I can summarize a couple years in a handful of minutes here to bring you to a month ago when I got lucky enough to get sober again. I also think it's important to mention right off the bat that I do have 30 days of continuous sobriety in a recovery program today. This is a really important fact because um, it lets you know that there's hope for people like me who left to their own devices cannot stop drinking or stop obsessing about drinking. And that's an important thing to relay early on. Side note, my drug and alcohol counselor made me promise to not post anything until I got 30 days. And with good reason. The first 30 days of being sober are intense and they have been for me in a great many ways. She thought it important that I come to you guys more right-minded and more stable. It has been my history on this channel to be very impulsive with what I post and how I post it. And in the spirit of not sensationalizing my addiction, in the spirit of not dramatizing it, we wanted to wait 30 days. So I have 30 days of sobriety. I'm incredibly proud of myself and I'm incredibly thankful to recovery programs and to the relationship I'm cultivating with a power greater than myself. Um, so if you are struggling, and you need help, I hope that you're encouraged to hear this from me even briefly, and I hope that you know you're worth it and that there's help out there available to you. All that being said, this is a long-winded life update. So if you're open to that sort of thing, I'm really, really glad you're here. And let's go back a couple of years. A couple of years ago, I was writing about nine months of sobriety. I'd been to a five-month inpatient rehabilitation program here in Portland, Oregon, and I came out confident, to say the least. I really did. In this program, I learned so much about addiction from a medical perspective, from a scientific perspective. I was very much armed with a lot of very useful information that helped me understand how the brain worked, how my mind worked as someone who is an alcoholic, as someone who has the disease of addiction. And I came out of that program uh, thinking I knew enough to not be necessarily susceptible to falling prey to relapse. And this is an interesting thing for me to even say out loud and think about because my story includes endless relapse. I am a chronic relapser historically. A few months after um, I got out of this rehab, a friend passed away who I was in treatment with. He overdosed and he died. And all that confidence and all that security in my sobriety that I thought I had, it wasn't enough to 
prevent me from falling into old behaviors. Now, I have so many things I want to talk to you guys about. It's ridiculous. But I'm going to try to keep this video relatively broad with the idea that for those of you that want to remain on this journey with me, we'll dig into some of the details that I think would be most useful to you guys and certainly to myself to express later. But just know that I wasn't ready for such a trigger, such an activating event. And I found myself drunk shortly after that. One of the things that happened when I got um, back into a drinking cycle and a drinking habit is that I wanted to condemn recovery to some extent. I needed to make sense of the fact that I couldn't stay sober. Couldn't or wouldn't, insert whichever word you think is more appropriate. But I wanted to make sense of the fact that I'd gone back out after such an expensive and rigorous rehab program. And I did a lot of justification, self-justification. I, I, I couldn't live with this idea that I was just incapable of doing the right thing, incapable of staying sober. So I looked for information that was going to validate my experience as someone who continuously drank despite tons of consequences, tons of consequences of, of every sort. And I stumbled across something that really suited me at the time. I stumbled across harm reduction. This isn't really something I'd learned much about, but I stumbled across harm reduction and I found a program by Dr. Adi Jaffe uh, called the Ignited Program. And this is not my video to condemn that program. I know that that program can work for some people. It just didn't work for me. But, but what I did was I latched onto this idea that not all of us are intended to be sober. And that made me feel good. And it made me feel vindicated in my drinking. And I convinced myself to a T or to a degree rather, but really used a lot of energy to convince those around me whom uh, were most concerned, namely the people in my very immediate circle, my wife, my family, my, my closest friends. I used my ability to communicate and to speak and to manipulate to put out this idea that, that I was not... I was among those that wasn't necessarily meant to be sober, but I could be in this harm reduction program that would push forward healthy life behaviors, a lot of the things I've been learning in rehab. It would encourage those things, but it would no longer see drinking for me personally as good or bad. It would just be this thing. And if I could take some of the sting, some of the weight off of it, then I could focus on the good, not get lost in the bad. And if I drank two, three times a week, but stayed sober, four or five days a week, this is how I framed it in my mind and I really latched on, then I would focus on those sober days. I wouldn't have as much of an emotional response to the drinking days. And this sounded really good for an alcoholic like me. Uh, this sounded really, really good because I got to drink and I get to do recovery and I get to separate myself um, and move further away from the, the recovery community and the, the people that were pursuing complete abstinence from their drug of choice, alcohol being mine. And I loved that idea and I ran with that idea. But I think deep down, immediately I knew that it was bullshit for me. I think I knew that. So I did the online program and I drank less for a time, but I want to really fast forward to the last year. So that first year, I kind of enjoyed some of my drinking, but one thing changed right away. Enjoyed is a weird word, but I, I wasn't experiencing a ton of consequences right off the bat. But one of the things that happened right away when I went back to drinking is the obsession to drink. The constant obsession, thinking about my alcohol consumption, when I would drink, how much I would drink, how I would navigate my schedule to drink. That happened right away, which is a tall tale sign of classic alcoholism. Normal people don't do that. They don't spend every waking moment thinking about alcohol. I did that from the jump. And um, I pushed that aside. As far as it being a red flag, I, I wasn't prepared or willing to look at that simple reality. Another thing that happened really quickly was that I, I kind of was doing this harm reduction so other people could know that I was doing harm reduction. I thought it was a really wonderful talking point for me when people asked, how are you doing? 
they knew that I went to rehab. They knew that um, I had professed, even here on this platform, how desperate I was, how sick I was, how miserable I was. I've seen that video I posted before rehab this last time, and I've been three times. And there was desperation in my eyes. I was sick. So to go back to drinking and to spend so much energy and effort convincing other people and lying to myself that things were going to be different was insane. Um, but it felt good to say, oh, look, I learned so much. I'm not the same person. I'm doing harm reduction. It's going great. But it never was. And I projected that and used that as my, my front for a couple of years. So let's talk about how my drinking and my behavior as an active drinker progressed. One, I became dishonest very quickly the last couple of years, and that's old behavior. I started minimizing my drinking and lying about it to people, to my wife, to my friends, my family, my professional relationships, all of it. Um, I immediately was drinking more than I said I was drinking and saying that I was drinking less. I continued to perpetuate the lie that I was working some sort of recovery program. I, like I said, I leveraged the fact that I paid for this really high-end ignited program uh, that I did not work. I really did not work. I tried, but I didn't work it because I wanted to drink and I just didn't work it. It, it, it didn't work for me. Um, but my drinking and my lying elevated and advanced. And my drinking went from three or four days a week to like five days a week. And it very quickly matched what my drinking was prior to getting sober. I would say prior to getting sober, the last time I was roughly a four or five night a week drinker, 12 to 14 standard drinks a night. That was my old drinking prior to getting back. And I got back there really quick. What I will say is that for a time I was able to accept that about myself and try to just be a drinker and make peace with it internally. Regardless of what I was telling the world, and I'm pretty sure I made some disingenuous videos here on this platform, but regardless of what I was telling the world, I do know that I was having internal conversations like, listen, just don't fight it. Because when I've always, when I fought the alcohol, it's gotten worse for a time and I'll explain that more in a minute but don't fight it no it's just you're a drinker you're someone that likes to get drunk just do your best to control everything else just control everything else is what I would tell myself detox every day try to continue to take on responsibilities progress your life anyway just prove to yourself or something that you can just be a heavy drinker who still is successful I knew some and, and I just tried to make sense of it but it was total horseshit I knew that too yeah. As soon as I understand my brain, I'll be sure to let you guys know. If you figure it out first, please shoot me a comment and say, trust me, we already know. Because I, I, I couldn't even tell you how this brain works other than identifying with, you know, the actions, thoughts, behaviors, and everything of alcoholics. Hmm. So, in that spirit, yes, I would drink a lot, but I was taking on a lot of responsibilities. I went and tracked down a job that had an early start time and I purchased a gym and I thought to myself that if I can stay in shape, which is a different video in and of itself, but if I can work out a lot, stay in shape, um, have my YouTube channels, have this early morning job that I'm going to buy a business, if, if I could just do all these things, I thought to myself, look, it's going to help me stay, stay in control. It's going to keep me from going over the edge. I really thought that, which is interesting to think. It hasn't been my experience in the past and it wasn't my experience this time, but I really believed it or I wanted to at least. And very quickly, my life became unmanageable, like totally unmanageable. I was calling in sick when I wasn't sick. I was drinking when I shouldn't drink. I was drinking more than I wanted to. I was experiencing regret and remorse over the times I would drink. I was experiencing damn near euphoria if I wouldn't drink because I was so surprised and I always had it in my head that 
okay, I am doing that thing that I wondered if I would do. I'm probably getting a little off the rails. Let's fast forward to the last six months of my drinking. If I want to rehash specific things later, I will. Let's fast forward to the last six months. So I've been back out drinking for 18 months. I'm lying to people about how much I'm drinking. I'm lying to, um, I'm just lying a lot. I'm drinking more than I want to. I'm drinking when I don't want to. I'm drinking when I shouldn't, when I wish I wouldn't. I'm experiencing more mental health issues, physical issues. I'm having a sharp stabbing pain in my upper abdomen, which is an issue from the past that had fully resurfaced. I'm not able to cut back or stop my drinking enough to maybe heal my body, maybe help my professional life. I purchased a gym and I'm hanging on by a thread because everything I do in this last year, but particularly this last six months, as far as the extremes of it, everything I do, I do hungover. And I also do obsessing about when I will drink again. So I'm never present. And it made me sad. It really did. I don't think I've been having fun in my drinking fun. I don't think I've been able to even remotely get what I thought I was looking for anymore for at least half a year, but probably more like a year um, at all. And then even in the previous year of being back to drinking, it was just in spurts because I knew. Like deep down, I knew as much as I've been trying to, and this is a trend, but as much as I try to suppress my authentic self, suppress my, my true self, that part of me that knows better that part of me cries out. It's been crying out for a couple of years. And it made me sad and it was easier to push away for a time. But the last six months, my drinking, I'd say in the last six months prior to this 30 days that I have acquired of recovery and sobriety, I probably only put together maybe four or five sober days, maybe. And they were like me limping into it. So. I became something in the last six months that I never thought I would be, which was a daily drinker. That hadn't been my experience yet. That was one of my yets. And so that spooked me because somewhere in the last half a year, I realized that I couldn't not drink. I really realized that on a day-to-day -day basis, regardless of what I was thinking or how I was feeling, or how miserable I was mentally, emotionally, and physically. That fucking spooked me, scared me. Um, because I, once again, but to a higher degree, I didn't know what I was going to do at any given moment. I didn't know what lengths I would go to to make sure I got drunk. And when I drank, I knew I wouldn't stop until I was really drunk, no matter what was going on. And it was very scary. My typical morning was laying in bed from 3.30, 4.30, up till 5.30, 6.30, sometimes laying in bed awake, detoxing, dark thoughts, ruminations, so much anxiety, sweating like crazy. I would just lay there for hours, rubbing my own chest, rubbing my own back, trying to forgive myself for being so drunk again. Um, it was awful. And anyone who's ever had... <laughs> Anyone who ever thinks and drinks like me understands that feeling, understands that trapped, hopeless feeling. However, I would lean on what I had learned in the past and I would try to build myself up and I'd say, no, it's okay, I love you, we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna figure this out. Just get through right now, get through right now. Sheets all wet, uh, shaking, not feeling good. I would sleep in until 10, 30, 11. I would go through the exhausting experience of attempting to present myself in a way to my wife, namely, but to the world that I was okay, everything's okay when I wasn't, and it was very obvious. The emptiness in my eyes was insane. Nothing in my eyes. I would look in the mirror and be like, oh my God, like I don't see me anymore. I don't see me looking back. This went on for like, four straight months of essentially drinking every single day and my drinking was very ritualistic. I gritted my teeth. I was restless, irritable, and discontent. I was down. I was sad. I was sick. These constant hangovers. I had a little bit of a shake going on. I would tell my wife, oh, it's my, it's my amino acids. It must be my supplements. Oh, it's the coffee. It's a little bit of coffee. It's causing just this, this little shake right here, baby. Um, but then the evening would come and like a zombie, I would go drink and I would, 
I would just always drink no matter what. And when I drank, I, I typically would put down eight to 10 standard drinks on my way home from the gym, which means that I was drinking and driving every day, which is awful. And I'm not happy about that. I'm not proud of that, but that's what I would do. And then I would try to open a drink when I got in the door and take a swig in front of my wife so she would see that I just opened one. That's why I smell the way I do. And then I would run to the bathroom and take a shower and usually drink more. And then I would babysit one or two. And then I would double in back. <laughs> Fuck, I'm super drunk. I'm super drunk. Now I got to detox. Now I got to drink water. And now I have to save face with my wife and pretend I'm not drunk. I could go on and on and on. And you know what? To some degree, it's important to, to acknowledge the misery. And we will in another video. We'll, we'll, we'll break this stuff down into smaller components. But let's go to, let's go to when I first wanted to get sober again. <laughs> Um, which was six weeks ago, let's say, maybe seven. Six, seven weeks ago, eight weeks ago, probably. No, five, it must have been like 10 weeks ago, excuse me. I got to that burning point. Everything was falling apart. Everything, my business was falling apart. My marriage was falling apart again. I was a terrible friend, a terrible employee. My self-care was falling apart. My drinking was extreme. I was freaking out and I finally started making little comments and letting people know I was freaking out. I finally got honest with one or two people. Oh, things aren't going well because I, I was alone. I've just, I've been so alone the last couple of years and that isolation whilst being around people is a damning feeling. It's a damning feeling that, that haunts me and it's haunted me to be so alone while being around so many people I love and who love me, but not feeling them, not being honest with them, being a, apart from them, like a prisoner to my own addiction again, but worse. And I knew that's like, oh my God, this is so much worse. So, so I said I needed help. I drunkenly, or in a drunk state, reached out to a handful of people. I was like, I'm in trouble. I had a couple of drunk, deep conversations where I finally said the truth out loud and it felt good. It's like, oh my God, I finally just told someone the truth. Thank God, a couple of years of lying. But here's the thing with me. And I wonder if this has happened for any of you and comment below if you feel comfortable. But once I decide I want help again, my drinking gets weirder and darker and the vice grip that addiction and alcohol has on me gets tighter. I become more obsessed about drinking, more unpredictable, more impulsive. And to that extent, more afraid of myself. Because when I was conceding to being a drunk, there was some sort of comfort in that. Like even the days where I was like, please don't pull over and get more booze, please don't do it. Hey, no, it's all good, this is what you do, you're a drinker, you know, it's, it's just, I would convince myself and I would just surrender, surrender to king alcohol. Because if I surrendered, it did seem less miserable or something. So when I asked for help, I got afraid because I couldn't stop. And that's always been my experience. Like, yeah, I know I can't stop. But once I say, okay, I'm going to stop. And then you drink more and you have weirder behavior. It's, it's fr fucking devastating and it's frightening. It's scary. Um, so for a month, I went to recovery meetings daily, but got trashed after every recovery meeting. Um, excuse me. So for months, I went to recovery meetings and just got trashed after the meeting. And emotionally speaking, it's, that was extra hard as well because now I'm trying, but now I can't. And then you start having, excuse me, I began to have very familiar haunting thoughts like, oh no, I can't stop. I want to stop. I'm afraid. I'm starting to get afraid for my life because my mental health was doing strange things. My anxiety was reaching peaks it hadn't reached before. My uh, detox symptoms were getting worse. My hangovers were turning into more like sickness. I, I was chugging um, Dayquil throughout the day and ibuprofen and taking these hot showers thinking, oh, I'm getting sick. But I was basically just sick every day in a way that felt like the flu. But I'm still drinking and I'm drinking so aggressively and... 
And so I, it was just a freaky month. It was a freaky month of drinking even more, even faster. Despite going to recovery meetings and talking to a drug and alcohol counselor and telling my wife, I want to get sober, I need help. And then I would just drive home and I'd be drunk by the time I got home. So I had to take things to the next level for me. And one of the ways I do that is, um, is I surrendered my keys and my wallet. Um, and I had them locked away and I surrendered my phone. No, I kept my phone, it was my keys in my wallet. I tried to increase the, the barrier of entry to my drinking, but at that point I was in full psychotic, alcoholic mode. I was going to great lengths to drink no matter how many obstacles I put in place and that brought up potentially going to rehab again. It is really hard to encapsulate the insanity I was experiencing, but it was, it was pitiful and incomprehensible demoralization as recovery as recovery buffs would, would attest to. I have an incredible sponsor, he worked with me, and we decided, and my drug and alcohol counselor decided that if I, um, that I would keep trying, we started talking about rehab. We started talking about rehab. And I managed to get eight days sober, going to meetings, working with my sponsor, doing my thing. And then my wife went out of town and um, and I had the worst three-day bender I've ever had. Um, I didn't have my wallet or my keys, so I just I manipulated a neighbor and I got him to lend me cash. And then I went to I walked to a mini mart like a zombie, like a zombie. It's the craziest feeling. Like a zombie, I walked to the mini mart and I got booze and I started getting drunk. And the next day, I think I had twenty-one to twenty-two drinks that day and I manipulated the bank to give me money without my ID and I was just off. It was the worst three days and it was capped off by the last day where I don't know how this happens or how this works, but I had an all out panic attack while drunk, uh, which would have been 31 days ago. I don't know if, how many drinks I had, but I, kind of passed out or blacked out, came to, and I thought I was gonna die. And I thought I was gonna die and or maybe I would kill myself, trying not to black out, but I was panicking, full on panic attack. And that panic attack and that terror was one of the scariest moments of my entire life. Um, and I was up all night. I was taking cold showers, trying not to black out, thinking I'm gonna kill myself or I'm gonna die if I black out, heart racing, and I barely survived that night is how my brain perceives it. I don't know how much real danger I was in, but it, it was it was real to me. It was scary. And and I survived it. And I decided that if I drank again, I was going to rehab. And my drug and alcohol counselor helped me decide that. And then as broken as I've ever personally felt with my addiction, as broken as I've ever felt, I stumbled into a meeting, just so scared and so hopeless. Um, and that was 30 days ago. The first five days were awful. Um, I, I was afraid of my behavior. I was afraid of myself. And then slowly but surely it's gotten better. Um, and I wanna talk all about the last 30 days in a different video. And I'm gonna share with you everything that's happened um, because I want to focus on that, the, abs the absolute miracle that I am sober today and I've been sober for 30 days and I haven't had any obsessions or cravings to drink. I've had some major activations. I've worked through some tight little situations, but all in all, in spite of myself, um, and by the grace of the recovery program and in a relationship I'm cultivating with higher power and then honestly just desperation, just complete in utter desperation. Um, I have been adopting old behaviors that I've learned in recovery to a higher degree. And I haven't been drunk every day like I have last couple of years. And it's amazing. And I, I can hardly believe it. Um, it's a big deal 
for me to get one day was a big deal. It was the hardest one day I'd ever gotten. And it was the hardest two day and three day. And it was the hardest first week. All of it has been the, the hardest 30 days overall. But I have finally, for the first time in two years, I have felt right with myself. Even when my mental health in these early days have, have, has wavered and been tough and my fear has been high because once you have succumbed to your addiction so many times like I have, it it's tremendously hard to feel any hope for me. It's incredibly difficult for me to experience hope for my future because it has just slipped through my fingers so many times. But, but I've done what has been suggested as humbly as I can, as faithfully as I can. And I'm 30 days sober and I have hope again. And that hope is invaluable to me on a day-to-day, moment-to-moment basis because I lived that hopeless state that addicts and alcoholics live with. And I... And I'm just incredibly grateful. So I think we should stop there. I wanted to end on a, on a high note because this is a wonderful, beautiful thing to end on. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. I'm going to set the intention with recovery and sobriety being first, um, second and third, but I'm going to set the intention so long as this relationship with being online and being on YouTube is healthy and I'll have my, my support system help me decipher if it's healthy. But I think it can be if my motives are in the right place. And my motives here are to be honest and to help someone else who might be struggling. Um, someone like me, that's what I want this to be about. I don't want this to be about about celebrating me. I want this to be about proving that even someone like me can get help again is worth getting uh, is worthy of help once more and who deserves to be content and and who can get sober even when they don't believe they can or worry that they will never be able to i want that person if you're out there to know that that you can because if i can you can because getting sober this time so far i I honestly finally understand that thing you hear in recovery meetings. It's, it's sort of a cliche, but I honestly think this has nothing to do with me other than I came in fucked up enough and broken enough, but I've thought I've done that before. So it has to be recovery in, in God for me, whatever that means to me. It has to be that because on my own, I try not to drink and drink more. On my own, I tear my life apart. I just do, and I suffer for it. I suffer for it. I, I, I just, it's so strange to talk about the last couple of years so quickly when it was the slowest, most mind-numbingly it was it just I suffered a lot at my own addiction, at my own hands per se. It, it was a slog. Yeah, and it just, it, it frightens me to this moment. The shit shell shocks me. So, <laughs> I have laughed in the last 30 days. I have cried in the last 30 days. Um, and I have found some peace. And I'm getting to know my true self again, and I have hope. So, we'll end it on that. Please, if you got anything out of that, wonderful. Um, and if you need help, please don't be afraid to get it. Thank you so much for listening to me. And if you want to leave a comment in the comment section below, just talking about how you are doing or what your experience has been with this sort of thing or someone you know or anything you want to share, I'd love to hear it. I truly would. And I look forward to reconnecting with you guys and seeing you in the next video and being in a healthier space to make content that hopefully can have some value in the world. So my name is Noah, I am an alcoholic, but I am a sober, recovering alcoholic today, and I'm very, very thankful, and I'm going to just focus on getting the rest of today. All right, guys, take good care of yourself, be nice to yourself, one day, one hour, one minute at a time. We can get through whatever we're going through, even if we don't think so. Speaking to myself, I promise.
All right, guys, take care.